Okay, so I want to continue this video. I have about 15 minutes until I get to work, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and I just want to discuss a little bit of this idea of how the various movements within or without, however you want to just define it, whatever you want to, the semantics you want to use in and around Judaism, are basically responsible for the phenomenon that we see today that there are many Jews who convert to Christianity and maintain their Jewish identity. And, uh, and so we, I said there's, you know, there's a few major issues that we have to tend with here. And so once again, just to reiterate, I was, uh, I, I, I was in a little bit of a, a Twitter discussion with an old friend of mine, Rabbi Eric Kotkin. He should be well. Very fine. Eric Kotkin, Tito Vesachri Yiddishkeit. He accomplishes great things for Judaism. He's a very special Gaman. He does wonderful things. And Talmud Chochem. I have a lot of respect for him. And as it is, the way we learn in Judaism is that we discuss different points. We don't agree on everything. We, you get to a level of intellectual honesty and intellectual enlightenment by arguing. And, and in a certain sense, I've always said that dissent is sacred in Judaism, as long as it's done respectfully and so forth. Quickly, Rabbi Kotkin posted something on his Twitter page, the College Rabbi, where he, uh, he it was a picture of a Lubavitcher Chosid with a tillim, it was Lubavitcher Tehillim, and it was a, an advertisement for Jews for Jesus. And I, I commented, "What's the nafkamina? What's the what's the difference?" And so the, the immediate response <laughs> by one of the Babacher Chosid was, oh, Joseph is a hater. I'm talking about me. Joseph is a hater. And I, I was being provocative by asking what's the difference. But the word nafkamina means what comes out from it. That's, I mean, it's, it's a, colloquially we use it to mean what's the difference in Talmudic language. But nafka means to go out, mina means from it. What can we get out from this? And so the, there, there's, and so and, and the fact of the matter is, there is a nafka mina, of course, between Jews for Jesus and, and Chabad. But the point that Rabbi Katkin wanted to bring out was that one thing is distasteful to use someone's image for, for a reason that they don't like. That's the obvious part of the story. But the less obvious part is something an old friend of mine, uh, my roommate in college, Rabbi Ben Greenberg, focus on side. So Rabbi Greenberg, he, he, said, he pointed this out in an interfaith discussion group. I don't know, he pointed out to me, he heard it in an interfaith discussion group. The fact of the matter is, is that the issue of a dead Messiah, if we accept Chabad as being a kosher part of Judaism, and the, uh, the vast majority of Chabad Hasidim believe that the Rebbe's Mashiach, even if they don't call themselves Mashiachist, really the, the navgamin between the Mashiachist and the non-Mashiachist in Chabad is uh, whether they publicly say that the Rebbe's Mashiach or not. That's really the, the only real difference between these two groups, for, with the majority of Chabad Hasidim. I remember Moshe Weinberger years ago, he used to think that uh, only the Meshachistim were the problem. And then uh, he came to realization that no, but the majority of Chabad, they do believe Lubav Trebs Mashiach. And, he, and, and Rabbi Weinberger said, do we even know what it means to have a Rebbe, let alone love a Rebbe? Which is a, a good, healthy, reaction to this realization of the, of the fact of the matter is when, when we say anti mishachist the reason was is because Lubavitcher Rebbe 
never said he wasn't Mashiach. He said, don't say I'm Mashiach because it's going to hurt me. It's going to make me, look, you know, it's going to hurt my, what I'm trying to accomplish, whatever. He didn't say he is or he isn't. But he said, don't say it. And that, so that's really the issue. The, the anti mishachistan they're saying they're doing the rotsen of the Rebbe by not declaring that the Rebbe is Mashiach because by declaring it, it... Uh, It'll be uh, it'll be very bad. It'll be it'll have a bad impact. You know, meaning it'll be bad for PR. That's basically what the whole issue is. Is is, is a PR war. And that's with something obviously it's very well known. Chabad. That was their whole thing was PR. You know, I mean, Lubavitcher Rebbe had certain views that were very anti-Zionist. He was very supportive of Notori Karta. He had a, a subscription to Hachoma, which is a Notori Karta newspaper from Yerushalayim. And one time it came late. He said, um, and he said, oh, I, I have to... Uh, send them money, they need money. If, if they weren't doing this, I'd have to do it. That's what he said. So why So why don't we hear, why, everyone thinks Chabad is very pro-Zionist. They're certainly pro-Israel. Um, but Chabad is, is anti-Zionist. But their anti-Zionism takes it in a different direction than, let's say, Saab or Brisk or uh, Victor Miller or, well, you know, there are different types of anti-Zionism also. So theirs takes a little bit of a different turn also. Why don't you hear about this in Chabad? Because it's bad PR. They want to, you know, it's like the, the, the story was, uh, uh, what, they say that um, Moshe Halberstam said, told Lubavitch Rebbe, if he would put on a strimal, he would, he would uh, get, uh, you know, 10,000 more Hasidim, something. So he said, well, where am I taking the Hasidim from? Uh, from, from uh, a few from Vizhnitz, and a few from Sabra, and a few from Bells, and a few from Square. He said, yeah. So he said, so, so uh, I don't need... I mean, they're already okay. I mean, that's one thing I wish Lubavitcher Hasidim today would realize, you know, because I remember I'm pointing out to Rabbi Katkin, we both learned together in Or Sameach, but we heard in Or Sameach, one of the Bachrim there, he said he was sitting on a train... And he saw a, 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 a Lubavitcher doing Mitzoyim, doing their missionary work. That's what means Mitzoyim, it's a mission. Um, and doing their missions uh, to a, a, a Bentur, to, to a Litvish Bentur. And so he said, Why are you bothering this kid? So the, this this Bacher, he had Stoltz, he had Azus the Kedusha. He said to him, he said, what are you, bo- what are you bothering this guy for? You know, uh, there are plenty of fry even to go work with him. What, what, what do you need to be Makar of uh, someone who's already from? And he said, well, we have to, we have to be Makar of everyone. Because the, the, the goal of most Lubavitches today is not, especially, you know, the Shluchim, it's not just to make people from, but to make people Lubavitch or see them. You know, I know someone, one of my Rebbeim, a little while was a Chos, and he was a shliach, and he went. The, the head shliach wanted to test him out of whatever neighborhood, the city he lived in. It was a there was a head shliach for that state. It's going back in the '60s, '60s or '70s. We're not talking about now after Lubavitcher was nifter already. He was a rav of a shul, so it was a whole thing. And, uh, and now he's, he's an older person. He's retired. He's retired about big I'm not going to mention who it is because he, he doesn't really want to. He, he tries to hide this part of the story because he doesn't want to get in trouble with the politics. But the um, he went. The shliach went to listen to this younger man speak at the uh, at the college and and the uh, all the college students they enjoyed his 
his drosha, his sermon, and the head shliach, he had the, the, this younger man, he has the head shliach. No, what do you think of the speech I gave? So that everyone loved it. And the, and the shliach, the older shliach, he said, it's horrible because you talked only about God. We don't talk about God. You have to talk about the Rebbe. And this, this, this Rav, he was a younger man, he sent a letter to the Lubavitcher Rebbe, and the Lubavitcher Rebbe answered. You have all these books of Igris and Kodesh, right? From the Lubavitcher Rebbe. He, he wrote a letter addressing this problem. He never answered this letter. He still has respect for Lubavitch, I'm not saying, but he never answered this letter. Just people should understand what we're working with. But the fact of the matter is still, Afal Pichain, Lubavitch Rebbe, he wasn't interested in taking away Hasidim from Bells and Sapper and, and, and Baba Vibishnitz. He was interested, he said, he said, if I, maybe he was, but he said, like, in the Hashem uh, the uh, the secularists, the, the communists, how many of them will I attract if I put in a strike? That's what he said to Tzadik HaGoynet HaKadosh Moshe Halberstam Moshe Halberstam Tzadik I remember seeing him and um, in Yerushalayim I remember seeing him um, it's essentially Problem that Lubavitch they want to help to teach their Hasidus the same way that like Breslov they do Hafotza, there was a Maisa, uh, I think a year or two ago in Monroe. So Lubavitch they sent Muftsoyim, they sent missionaries to Monroe to sell Svarim something, to sell books, Lubavitch books. And uh, and there was a, a mentally ill person, the Trey Carter from Muncie, wasn't uh, was not a resident of Monroe, and he did something very nasty, uh, and and uh, to uh, he threw paint on on this on this bach or something. Um, but the uh, the Sabr see them there. When they saw what happened, they went and they bought him new clothes, and they apologized to him. They said, "This guy is not one of us." And they and they also bought all of his farm because they're Ehrlich people. The Sabbath, and they don't, you know, the, the Torah Karta make make them look bad. But there are a lot of nice in the Torah Karta too. The, even if we disagree with them, but again, I'm not saying this because I hate Chabad. I have respect. I just I disagree, and there's and it's important to know what we disagree on. Maisa, I'm here at work now. I don't have time to be marich on this anymore. But Mirza Hashem, when I'm done with work, we're going to get back to this Indian because it's a very important Indian. Um, to discuss, you know, these two issues of messianism and and what really are the causes for messianism and what and and how. These many movements, not just Chabad, the secular movements, the reform, all of them essentially are justifying are justifying um, all kinds of uh, kfira. And, and and you know, I remember some years ago, there are two things I really want to talk about here. But again, I'm here at work already. I don't have time to discuss these issues, so we're going to have to put it aside. But we should ask ourselves, you know, it's it's not right, you know, why is... We have to ask ourselves a lot of things about our interactions with other religions and also how we view our own religion. Judaism is a religion and uh, issues that come in there. So, um, again, I don't have time right now. And again, this is not a hate piece against Lubavitch. It's just, we should understand what we're dealing with and why we have differing views on different subjects. Um, and the 
Jewish world, and, and it's always been this way. And um, so, right, essentially, I'm, there's a lot to say here, so we're going to have to come back later. All right, God bless, take care.